Stuart Rhodes, founder of Oath Keepers, OathKeepers.org. Organization is exploding. Your military contacts give you the same info we get. Uh, half the military is awake right now. It's accelerating. The enemy is in crisis. Stuart Rhodes. Yeah, at least half of them. In fact, in, among special warfare personnel, it's more like 75%. And this is the problem they have, is the powers that be understand that there's now a growing, um, sizable percentage of the population who can no longer be fooled. They've taken the red pill. They see what's going on, and they're no, no longer manipulable with, with their uh, false flags or their use of fear. So they, they know that their time is limited. Given enough time, we will prevail. It could wind up like 1989 East Germany, where you had a mass stand down of the military and a mass stand up of the people. And without the support of the military, the Stasi are running and hiding because they couldn't, they couldn't overpower the people. There's no way they could do it. So that's possible. But I think that before we get to that tipping point of that mass awareness, which we will if we're allowed the time, I think they'll try to pull the plug on the economy. It's all they have left. They have their, their Armageddon option of the economic neutron bomb, collapse the dollar, kill the dollar, blame it on the Chinese, especially under, under uh, the cover of a war with Syria. They could say, hey, we entered Syria to get rid of uh, chemical weapons, and the Ch Russians and Chinese retaliated economically. They wanted that war as political cover, but now that's failing. The, their gun grab failed. Uh, I mean, they're desperate. So they, but they still could pull out the plug on the economy and kill the dollar and start a run on the dollar worldwide. And that could be potentially as destructive as a nuclear exchange or an EMP, EMP strike because if you kill the economy, Americans don't have food storage. Americans are, are the most unprepared population on the face That's of the earth. That's been done by design. They've encouraged right. that. Absolutely. They, they prepared themselves. Relentlessly, they've been, been putting in place mechanisms for control, all the weapons they would need, all the all the armed, armored vehicles they would need, and all the ammunition they would need to control us or kill us. Did you see that Marine Corps colonel that went public and said they're pre-deploying pre everything against Absolutely. us? Absolutely. You bet. Yeah. And anybody who's been in, in military training understands um, logistics. Logistics wins the battle. It's not grab your rifle and, and, and run out in the street like break. It's out. mass and supply chain and then initiative. It's logistics. And so on our side, they're preparing the future battle space on their side for their benefit. On our side, we need to be careful about being distracted with all this bombardment of negative information. Are they doing this? Are they doing that? Let's go protest here. Let's go protest there. But be careful about that because we only have so much blood in our bodies. A good analogy is that they're hooked up to an unlimited blood bank through Soros or through the Federal Reserve, like you just said. You know, the funding for NPR is, is billions of dollars. Versus what do we get? On our side, it's individuals who have to fund our campaigns. And so be careful about what you go and spend your money on or your, or your time and your, and your sweat because you only have so much. And so rather than, than running around protesting everywhere, sometimes protests make a big difference. I think the symbolic virtue of the veterans in, in Washington, D.C., the World War II veterans, kicking down the barricades and going in anyway is, is very valuable. Something like that is worth getting behind. Sure. Uh, Second Amendment, uh, nullification. I mean, I think it's full spectrum. Get ready yourself, but also be on the offensive in the info war. I yeah. say do everything. Sure, but be careful about spending all your time just running around waving a sign. They want you to do that. What they don't want you to do is, in your local areas, stand up. Oh, oh, I agree. You need to be going to talk to the police chief and warning them, giving them info, finding out, getting intelligence where they stand. You need to be getting with the military veterans, preparing for not fighting, but preparing to be leaders in your area. Absolutely. That's why we started a new initiative within Oath Keepers. We're calling it the Civilian Preser uh, Civilization Preservation Teams. And the whole focus is on getting our community squared away at the very bottom, right down in the neighborhood watches, right down in the veterans halls in particular. Because we've gotten the guns and the ammo. Now we need to really do the boots on the ground, ready to take care of our neighbors. That'll put us in the leadership position immediately. The logistics. You need to have the ability to feed your neighbors, to have communications, to have clean water and power, and to have emergency medical care. Because by the way, when stuff collapses, they're coming anyways. Right, that's what you need, that's what you need. Look at any hurricane, any tornado, any, any natural disaster, what do you wind up needing? You need clean water, you need shelter, you need a way to keep warm, and you need medical care and food. Those are things you need. So why not get that squared away in your own neighborhood right now so you are able to take care of things, you are able to be the force for good in your community rather than them all being desperate and scared and relying on FEMA coming in who says, hey, yeah, sure, we'll give you food, turn in your guns, turn in your neighbors. We'll and the police food. are already priming the pump all over the country in Detroit and L.A. saying we'll give you grocery money for your guns. You bet. You'll get, you'll get the EBT card if you turn in your neighbor, you turn in your guns. So we need to make sure that we are strong. 
if you have a squared away community, it's much more likely the National Guard will refuse the orders, the police will refuse the orders, and the active duty military in particular will say no to gun confiscation. Or but they plan war. on having all the welfare folks riot, where if you're not ready, you'll beg the military in. Well, sure, and not just welfare folks. Average Americans who go to nine to five jobs right now have how much food in their, in their, in their house? Two days. Three or four days at the most. Right, probably more like two days. So wait a week, two they're just as desperate as any... And the globalists admit workers. they've done all this by design, getting us ready like the Ukraine under the Soviets for the cultural re-education like Mao did. They did the same thing in China. This is a tried and true plan. Mm -hmm. David Rockefeller said, we will use food as a weapon in America. Sure, you look at the historic precedents in uh, Stalinist Russia. Stalin starved out the kulaks, independent farmers, confiscated all their food and killed them through mass starvation. And the same thing happened with Mao in China. Anytime the government wants to stop a mass of people who they cannot just kill outright with weapons, they will use starvation. By the way, we're not just saying this. This is on record. They, the globalists have all written. We are under globalist occupation. We've still got some resistance and some media. People are waking up. But they really would like to do this if they can get away with it. Sure. And so we need to see it as they're shipping the future battle space. We know a fight's coming. You need to re recognize and realize that. If we can do it, like I said, with a enough of awakening, we could be a peaceful, a peaceful re revolution, a mass stand down like in 1990 East Germany. But we should presume the worst that, that before that can happen, they'll pull the plug and try to starve us out. What I like about your plan is that it's historical, it's well researched, and you're not saying Oath Keepers runs at all. It's a basic blueprint of peaceful preparation and resistance, civilization preservation teams, start them everywhere. Right. The enemy can't infiltrate us everywhere. Plus, they've lost the major initiative. The average police, and especially the military, now know we told the truth because the Patriots decades ago warning people. They're like, wow, these folks knew it was coming. They're now listening to us. They love their family. They know their, their paycheck doesn't go anywhere anymore. They know they're being sold out. They know George Washington's being brainwashed. How did the globalists miscalculate to openly badmouth the founding fathers in the official army training manual now? I mean, that shows the traitors have taken over. I mean, that's conviction right there. I think it's their own hubris. They, they like, I went to Yale Law School, and I can tell you, it's an incestuous community. They talk to each other only. They go to these special uh, confabs with other elites, and so they don't really see what's going on in small-town America. They, they believe their own bull, basically, their own propaganda. They're smoking their own dope. Exactly, smoking their own dope. And so they have the hubris and arrogance to believe they got it all figured out. They have not successfully undermine our culture. They have not successfully... Don't they know that the Patriots for 50 years saw this coming, mainly military guys that were inside the intelligence briefings and learned about this takeover? They've been trying forever. Don't they know we have a massive jump on them and have been warning people for decades? No, I think they don't. I think they, they, they believe they've got it all figured out and they're too smart, but they're too smart for their own good. So they're, they're uh, intellectual idiots. And they've taken our restraint as weakness as well. That's right. Same thing the British did with the, with the Founding Fathers. They believed that because they had put up with so much abuse and a long train of abuses that they would never fight. And they were very wrong. Well, I hope they listen because I know they're watching. I know the White House is watching on record. You globalists will be brought to justice when we defeat you. And remember Nuremberg. It's going to happen again. Remember that. We'll be right back. Stay with us. By the way, I never even got to this in the last hour. Democratic Congresswoman suggests martial law to end government shutdown, and she means political martial law to use really unconstitutional procedures to just force, force this through and ignore what the House is doing. And New Republic called for Obama uh, two days ago to do exactly what uh, Yeltsin did, but the Duma had clearly been kicked out, though, so that was more legitimate, even though he was a crook as well attack the Congress, basically throw them out. Uh, I mean, it really shows the mindset of these people. Like when the internal IRS memos came out, it turned out they were ordered by Obama to go after the Tea Party. The memos were like, these are scary, dangerous people. We've got to shut them down. It's like they don't want communism. They're scary. So the mid-level people, even though she was one of the head IRS people, she's still mid-level. They're like communist and socialist ideologues. But the people above them are just piratical megabanks. But their cannon fodder, it's like that White House petition they had, they got like 100,000 signatures to form communist uh, militias to take on the Tea Party. I mean, they're dreaming of like, they're Che Guevara and they're going to take us out, Stuart Rhodes. They're useful idiots, is what they are. You said, the people pulling the strings behind them are not going to institute world socialism, you know, so them some utopia for them. They're going to wind up killing them off at the end. Founder of Oath Keepers is with us. You know, speaking of Yale, where you graduated top of your class, you uh, won that big award for solving the public 
uh, puzzle of uh, enemy combatant status where you predicted in 2004 a lot of what's now uh, actually uh, happened. Like drone strikes. Like drone strikes. And now it's here. Uh, you saw it coming. What will come? What will America be like if we don't fully mobilize, get prepared to be the leadership in our area? A cross between um, Adolf Hitler's Nazi Germany, uh, Stasi East Germany, and Stalinist Russia. So totalitarian. Yeah, that's their plan. Right. Absolutely. So we have to realize, like Patrick Henry said, you know, realize the truth, however hard it may be, and then, then provide for it. Recognize where you're really at and then get ready to take care of it. And notice how their war gaming is now playing out. Five years ago, Tea Party's number one enemy, returning veterans in the fetters, Ron Paul, they're the enemy, get them. Oath Keepers, Alex Jones, they're the enemy, get them. Because we're the only opposition, and now Obama is, it's gone from Tea Party doesn't have any power, the real Tea Party, not the neocon version. That takeover failed. Now the real Tea Party has taken over the House, may take over the Senate. They're scared, and they're actually ringing the alarm bell, now saying Louis, they are powerful, and they're, they're, they're blocking our utopia. And notice how they always talk about democracy, but when your elected representatives are blocking what they want to do, all of a sudden now, now the president has to go around Congress. He has to wage war without Congress. He has to impose Obamacare without Congress. He has to stop the shutdown without Congress, et cetera. Now it's like we want a dictatorship because he's right, a dictatorship of the proletariat. Amazing. I want to come back the next hour and give the phone number out for veterans currently serving or... Uh, active duty, but can also be reserved for any questions for Stuart or any comments you want to make about how awake uh, the guardians of the Republic are. Uh, but I, I mean, I got to tell you, it's very heartening to see the military really waking up. One special warfare uh, soldier told us he believed that in his unit, it was half. Others have said it's more like 75%. And even the rank and file, it's about 30% of your average infantryman now is paying attention to what's going on. And tell folks what a 3%er is. A 3%er is a hardcore gun owner who is not going to back off who is not going to comply with any more gun laws. And that that movement started by Mike Vanderbilt has grown and grown and grown. And in fact... Um, a lot of military wears that patch now. Absolutely. You'll see you'll see uh, outside the wire in Afghanistan, you'll see an Oath Keeper tab and also a 3%er tab. And we have an upcoming rally in uh, down in at the Alamos coming up and this next weekend on the 19th is going to be an open carry Texas rally. And we think we'll be at least 600 people will show up there with long arms. They had the police chief say he's going to arrest folks if they show up. Um, but now he's talking to the other side of his mouth saying he'll give a one-day reprieve for this rally. So we'll see what happens. But regardless, we're going to be there. But again, there's no law there. We checked it. We talked to the land commissioner. It's lawful. Uh, so the police chief says he's going to break the law, and now he's starting to back off. Hopefully he'll back off. We don't want another Lexington or Concord to start, do we? Or Alamo. We'll be right back. Right. Stay there. we got to go to break. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Alex Jones here. And I want to tell you about a longtime friend of the show, My Patriot Supply. As you might remember, this is the company that stood up to the DHS and exposed FEMA's secret plan to begin hoarding emergency survival food. It has always been my belief that it's key to stand behind companies who share the same values as their fellow patriots. My Patriot Supply brings us their exclusive Patriot Pantry brand, along with many other fine preparedness products. I personally store and use their high quality products. It tastes great and it's easy to store for up to 25 years. For a limited time, you can save $50 instantly on a four week supply of food, along with other special offers. Visit MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today. With the New World Order making rapid advances on every front, it is essential to prepare with My Patriot Supply today. Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCM Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. 
And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. All right, the toll-free number of your active duty military and want to talk to Stuart Rhodes, have a question, a comment, or want to give him some info, toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. We'll go to your calls coming up in the next segment and get more into that Alamo thing because uh, we talked to the land commissioner who said, look, it's number one, it's the law that you're allowed to have guns open carry. But number two, that's state property, so they can have their guns on the Alamo. And he's the land commissioner that's over that, and the police chief is, like, going back and forth, but it just shows how out of control things are. Jakari Jackson did an interview with him and aired the other night. We should probably air that. We'll air that tomorrow. David Knight's doing the, the radio show tomorrow, so I, I want to air that land commissioner interview because it's a big deal tomorrow and some of the special reports when David Knight's here. But, Stuart, getting into what you're saying behind the scenes about – Oath Keepers is decentralized, perfectly designed, just like the founders, to be ideas. Those are bulletproof. They can come after you, but they can't shut down the signal. Well, we want our guys to form these teams as a working model and then to go out there and also as training cadre. But it's not that we want everyone to join Oath Keepers to form a team. We want our guys to lead by example and help others form their own teams in neighborhood watches, in veterans halls, in churches. Just You can even have to even talk to us. Just go on our website. We'll post all the information about how to do it, all the SOPs or recommended equipment lists, things like that, and training goals, and just run with it. If you want our advice, contact us, and we'll help you out. We'll help you do it. That way it's decentralized. It's from the people themselves ground up. It's not some select group of warriors. Explain the A-team model. Well, the A-team model is from the Special Forces A-team, where you have two specialists in each category on the team, like two medics, two communications experts, two engineers, which, is, which are things you need out there in the field. So if one is hurt or, or killed, you still have another one. And what we're doing is saying... Force okay, multiplication. You bet. And, but their main goal, SS main mission is not direct action. It's to go out there and teach. To go out and teach other people how to take care of themselves and how to throw, overthrow the oppressor. You know, deal oppressor with Liber. So we're taking that model and saying we want to apply the same model and adapt it to our communities. What do we need in every, every town and neighborhood? You cannot improvise communications. Either you got it or you don't. Either you got radios or you don't. You can, it's really difficult to, to improvise medical care. And same goes for emergency power, like, like generators and solar power. Either you got it or you don't. So put those critical things in place and a security element to protect them, and that's the nucleus. So even if your neighbors are asleep and not paying attention now, when the crap hits the fan, you are there as a unit ready to lead them. Most guys got guns, especially here in Texas or rural, rural Montana, other parts of the country. They have firearms, but they don't have those other critical infrastructure elements. So put those in place. And, and notice the globalists have done everything they can to phase that out because they understand that's key. If, if, if you're not self-sufficient, you're domesticated, they win. And I studied you know, basic history and ran into the French resistance model and then, and then some of the northern European models of total resistance, read the book Total Resistance, out of a lot of that, well, out of the founders, you know, uh, the A-team model. I've used that in information warfare with the truth just to try to get others out there as citizen reporters to then teach others you can't kill Alex Jones and shut down the info war now. Right. doesn't work. And remember that the founding fathers in their wisdom used both very open public organizing and their secret Sons of Liberty organization. They had public militias and town hall meetings, but they also had the Sons of Liberty. We're saying do both. Be very open and public about organizing sheriff posse behind a good sheriff, organizing neighborhood watches, getting all your veterans, your local VFW to stand up together. I mean, you're already on a list, guys. If you're a veteran... Have a public know. operation in face and then have your secret sure. operation. I mean, if you've got, you know, you should have uh, plan A, B, and C for your family. That should be private. That's need-to-know basis only. I don't want to know where your, where your safe houses are or where your, your second place to go. Because that's a sell method as well. Right. Stuff that's individual, you know that. Stuff that's group, that's group. You bet. That way you can't grab one person and learn the whole operation. And the, and the advantage to doing the very public organizing is think about this. What did Solzhenitsyn tell us? The mistake they made in, in the Soviet Union is they all were isolated by themselves, hoping the secret police did not come to their door, and they, were, they, were, they did not have any mutual aid or mutual self-defense. If you have an organized community, it's much less likely the secret police will be able to get away with it coming to your house. Bottom line, we're going to teach people how to take care of themselves and then resist. And when we come back, that's why the federally run Southern Poverty Law Center is so scared now. We're going to explain the warning they're putting out when we come back. And they should be concerned. The globalists are a criminal takeover arm. We are rightfully resisting it. And we're hoping for peace. This is a message directly to the globalists. I am not your slave. I am not your property. I can't help it. I can't sell out. I can't give in. It didn't end me. 
and I could feel for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction I could feel the sons of liberty rising yet again Stuart Rhodes is our guest I want to go to your phone calls Pete John Woody Renee Chad and others we're taking calls from current military or folks that have family in the military any questions or comments for Stuart Rhodes founder and the head of Oath Keepers oathkeepers.org very important to support those folks and it's so good to know Stuart know he's a for real organization and has weathered all the attacks because he set up the operation as informational and decentralized exactly as InfoWars has done. Just studying basic history and resistance against Soviets and the Nazis. That's what I did. I knew it was coming 20 years ago. I studied how they were countered. I'm here to counter them. I'm here to take action. I need you to join me. And we've done that together. And it, it is exciting to know that we have the initiative. They took over the Federal Reserve. They set up the systems. They're in control with unlimited blood supply, as you said. But we have the right. And if we're on the side of good. And if we continue to point that out, it's over for them. Stuart, breaking news at DrudgeReport.com. This is in the news articles that are coming out. White House and IRS exchange confidential taxpayer info. Now, that's been known for a while, but now it's coming out. The White House tried to deny it. Again, this is beyond Nixon, and now under Obamacare, it gives them all your medical data. I mean, how much of this will we put up with? But you were talking about during the break, letting the illegals come and protest, but arresting veterans if they uh, try to go see the World War II memorials. Now they're shutting down most of Arlington Cemetery, knowing people were pre-booked to go visit their loved ones. What's next? The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier will be unguarded for the first time in its history? So who knows? I mean, but the more they do this, actually, I think it's great because they're just, they're just showing everyone how absurd it is and how Orwellian they've become. The mask is coming off, and through their own arrogance, they don't realize what they're doing. I want them to piss off every American veteran and every active-duty military. The more they act like jackasses towards the military and the veterans, the better. But you went to Yale you, as a law student and as a graduate and, and rubbed elbows with these guys. They don't understand the military culture. They are arrogant. I mean, they really think they're all powerful. They do not understand the military. They do not understand where they come from. They don't understand traditional Americans. It's like they're they're autistic. They're brilliant on paper and, and you know, in and, and certain ways. But when it comes to common sense, they they don't have it. They do not have it, and they're blind to what they're doing. Why, at multiple parks, would they uh, lock people down in the hotel, say you can't leave for days, pull guns on foreigners pulling up in buses to see the, you know, to see Yosemite or, or or Yellowstone? I mean, it's they're crazy on their power trip. Yeah, well, they're trying to, to you know, magnify and amplify the, the shutdown to say, oh, look how horrible it is. But they're, what they're really doing is pissing people off. People know it's it's it's. Bull. They're now they giving tickets nonsense. to people that show up at the Grand Canyon at CBS News. Right. And so folks know it's nonsense. So the more they do this, we are, if they keep acting like this, we will reach the 90% that they had in East Germany who are aware of how illegitimate and evil the regime was. I hope they keep doing this. I hope the Senate signs that ridiculous UN treaty. You know, the more they do this, the easier it is for us to wake people up. It's becoming easier and easier. We've had guys who two years ago wouldn't listen to us in a veterans hall walking up to us now and apologizing, saying, I'm sorry I didn't listen to you. You were right. And now they're ready to take action. So the more they do this, the easier it is for us to wake people up. But we have to make sure that they actually do something rather than just look around and go, this is bad. Well, look at how seven Obama czars have, have said they love Mao Zedong, the greatest mass murderer in history. I mean, these people... And when you listen to them talk, they can barely talk, and they're all crusty looking and weird and, and, and just corrupt, but everybody just follows their orders. I mean, these are really a bunch of freaks. Well, everybody in their circle, that's why they, 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 they only see the reflection of their own echo chamber. And so they think that everyone will do what they're told. They believe, like, like Kissinger said, that all the military are just useless, dumb animals and do what they're told. But we know different. And we know from history that that's not the way it's going to go. Well, here's the difference. They may get poor people and all the rest of it, but a lot of folks join because of family and history of the military. And there's a few joins they like to kill people. But overall, they're great folks. And I've learned... Out of anybody in the culture, the reason the system hates military vets is they've had to live in the real world. They know the government lies to them. They know they're given bad vaccines. They know they get financially lied to and cheated. They know the corrupt stuff that goes on. And they have been in the real world and are not afraid to fight back. And so, of course, these ivory-towered cowards are, hate them. They hate anybody that's real, anybody that's experienced anything. They're scared of you. And they're not eunuchs. And they're not Eloy. For the Molochs, they are people with courage. 
And as you said earlier, what they want is a hyper-militarized, hyper-masculine state, and they want a sheeple. And the only other people in society they want to have that are, you know, masculine or able to take care of themselves would be the, be the hyper-criminals. So that the military does, and all the veterans, is throws a monkey wrench in that. They are not emaciated. They are not sheeple. These are people who are, can think for themselves and act on their own when they know what's right and they have courage. The most bottom line essential thing you must have is courage, as Aristotle said. Courage is the first virtue because without courage, knowledge... Wisdom doesn't matter. If you don't have courage, you will submit to all new tyrannies and make excuses for it right. until we have the video of Austin yesterday, 14 out of 20, signed a petition to make everyone wear helmets when they leave their house. Absolutely. So courage is the first virtue. And we have that. But what they will do, what they can do, is what they did during Katrina. When you have a disaster, that was the rub was, that was the test. In Katrina, because they were, it was seen as a real emergency by the troops, you had active duty military obeying orders to go and confiscate firearms. Part out of ignorance, but also because they perceived it as a real emergency. That's why it's critical for folks to get squared away in their communities so it's no longer a real emergency. They remove the pretext. You can weather any storm on your own. You don't need martial law to make you safe. Well, plus, it did backfire. They passed a law saying the feds can't do that. There right. was already laws on the books. You, but you later learned know. there were units that did actually stand down and say no. There were some. Yeah. Yes, but the point is, it wasn't about stopping looters. That was the police mainly. It was actually going into the rich areas and stealing their guns. Right. And so the, the point is, though, it's a reflection of human nature that the more dire the emergency, the more unprepared the people, the more likely it is that the military and police will obey the orders. And the more likely your neighbors will submit to it because they want the food. They feel they feel desperate. So it's essential to learn how to skin a buck, run a trot line, have storable food, firearms, and communications, and That's know right. your neighbors. A country boy can't survive. That's right. And, a, and an American can't survive. Be a real American. A real American doesn't sit on the couch. Because you can't bombs. starve them out and you can't make them run? That's right. That's the answer. Can't starve us out, can't make us run. That's it. You want security and you want food security, physical security to defend yourselves and each other. This was the, this was the founders' model. They grew their own food. They were independent farmers. They were all in the militia. You could not use the militia to oppress the people. And they'd all been in a bunch of real wars, so you couldn't push them around. Right. They, they'd fought the French and Indians on the frontier for hundreds of years. That is who King George pissed off. It wasn't the, the, wasn't the Boston merchants who were dangerous. It was the folks out in the countryside who were far more radical than even the Bostonians were. They had no idea what they were doing. They thought they were dealing only with Sam Adams and, and, and John Hancock, a rich merchant. They thought they were a pain in the neck. Then when they pissed off the townspeople out in the rural areas by banning town hall meetings, that's when they really woke the sleeping giant up. And the same thing's going to happen here in this country. You know, it's not what you and I say. It's the guy down the road who's been a, a World War II vet, a Korean War veteran, Vietnam vet. His whole family's been military. He was a veteran. That's the guy. And when he pulls up at a checkpoint where they're taking guns, all bets are off. And pretty soon there won't be any more of those checkpoints. Yeah, that's right. So there's, there's, and if he organizes with all the other veterans and all the other gun owners in his county in particular, and then get behind a good sheriff with a posse behind a sheriff, it can't be done. That, and that, under those circumstances, the TSA uh, Viper squads won't be able to do anything. Tell us about the Southern Barbie Law Center now. They're, they're calling you the fifth column. Well, in their comments, they have some readers saying we're a fifth column and we're, gonna, we're planning to take over. Um, but, of course, the absurdity of that is, is what we want is we want every American. We want America and the Republic back. They've taken over. Exactly. And we want every American to be trained. We don't want us to be the warrior class. That's not, that's not, I don't want that. No, that's the opposite. You're the opposite of them. Exactly. They want to be the commissars and everybody else is puling slaves. They want the hyper warrior class to be under their control only. And as you said, they're the commissars. What they don't want is they don't want independent, resilient Americans who raise their own children, who grow their own food, who have their own raw milk. They don't want that. Who take care of their own security. You know what's amazing? I'm going to skip this network break so we can get all these calls before our next guest comes up. I'm going to have you with us as well when Tosh Chumley, uh, Plumley joins us said Chumley, thinking of the guy from Pawn Stars. My kids like to watch that show. The point is, is that you can feel the history happening. I mean, this is not a game. And now I've, I've always known they were tyrants, but now I realize they're really the worst brand. I mean, we're really dealing with evil, and it's almost empowering to know we've been right and to know that nothing's going to stop these trains going together. This is the way it is. Yeah. And, and I'm just honored to be alive in a generation that gets to be in the real fight to decide the whole next cycle of human development because yep. this is it. 
Yep. Embrace the suck. Recognize your place in history. You were born here at this time as an American for a reason, and it's not to live on your knees. Okay, uh, Mr. Rose, I read your uh, your call, basically what sounds like a call to arms in America, and retired law enforcement with, with family in the military, and my oldest son, who did a tour in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, he's now out of the service. Don't you think with the NSA spying apparatus and the uh, police state that's now in place that if Oath Keepers does organize like this, that they'll be the first ones to be targeted, to be, you know, subjects under the National Defense Authorization Act? Yeah, potentially. But I think by then it's too late. We'll have spread the good virus. So we want our guys to go out there. They're already on a list. If you're an Oath Keeper member, you're on a list already. So why not go out and replicate yourself? The enemy putting patriots on list shows they're an occupying enemy. Right. This is not the government. But the utility of it is is I want to go replicate my skills in somebody else. If I'm afraid to go teach another American what I know how to do, which was reconnaissance patrolling, or whatever your MOS was, if you're afraid to do that, they win. You don't pass on those skills. You don't organize your fellow Americans. See yourself, if you want to see yourself as being on a, like a kamikaze mission, that's, that's fine too. No, no, you're a seed. Yeah, I'm, I'm, sending, I'm going out there to plant the seed as a, like, like an SFA team. They might be rounded up and killed, but, but by the time that happens, they'll have already organized the population. It's already too late to stop. Plus, more than even training people, you're teaching them that they can resist. Well, sure. Once people start thinking of that, they're going to figure out their ways as well. And you're not going to have security. Look, look, guys, a secret cell structure is not going to stop the secret police from getting you in the middle of the night. But if you organize your entire neighborhood and all the veterans in your town, now the secret police can no longer... Well, by the way, I mean, I'm no military guy, but I've studied it. If they start rounding people up, you don't wait in your houses. You go out. Right. Th then the defense is offense. You're not, you're not. You no. go on the offense the minute they start rounding people up. So in the worst case, I mean, look, here, th just to back up a second, this is what Americans are supposed to be doing anyway. The founders told us that we have a responsibility to take our protection and our national security in our own hands as a militia. That's why it says in the Second Amendment it's necessary for the security of a free state. You will not be free and you will not be secure without it. A secret cell structure is not going to help you when looters come rolling over your, your house and, 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 and burn you out and kill you. A secret cell is also not going to stop the secret police. So it does not provide for neighborhood security. It does not provide for your neighbors to be secure so they don't. The answer is we're the good guys. We're out in the open. We're the Americans against the occupier. Well, even if, but even if you're, you're talking about a worst-case scenario, but the utility of it is, as, as the founders did with the, with the open militias, is it forces them to try to bring out the standing army. And that's and why the force. open carry is so important, because they'd already taught people guns were illegal. The average idiot thinks they're illegal. The open carry lets them know, no, it's okay to have guns, and now the guns are back in the racks of the pickup trucks again. Right. We're now, this is true civil rights movement. God bless you, sir. I appreciate your call. Uh, let's go to Chad in Minnesota. You're on the air, Afghan vet. Uh, go ahead. Hey, Alex. I uh, appreciate everything you guys are doing. I just want to let you know, you know, I, we need our country back. That's for sure. This is just ridiculous. Um, things are out of hand. I'm an 11 Bravo infantry soldier. I was over in Afghanistan, and things are just out of hand. It's just ridiculous. Um, well, that's the key. The globalists aren't going to just back off either. They're not going to move slow anymore. They know we're winning the info war. They're trying to move it into the next phase. Go ahead. And I, you know, I just want to let you know that I'm not, I'm not going to sit back and stand, you know, stand for it. If they want to come to my, my door and take my weapon, they can take it off a pile of brass and my dead body afterwards. So, you Good. know, that's completely fine with me. I'll, I'll rally all my friends and neighbors. And I was born, you know, and, and raised by my father, who was a jack of all trades. Because I tell you what, our biggest problem in this country is everybody only knows one thing. Right. That's what you were saying to me last night, uh, uh, Stuart, is the key is that we all need to be generalists. We need to have full spectrum understanding of basics. Every American should be have light infantry skills, and, and you could specialize in one thing like an SF-18, but then you should cross-train. He's right. You should be able to take care of yourself and your family. As, as Highland said, specialization is for insects. Yep. I was an Eagle Scout, and we were raised through, you know, going through the woods, knowing how to take care of yourself. Right. We go hunting, we go fishing. Right. If it comes down to it, we can survive, you know, and that's the biggest thing. But most people are too afraid. Pass, us, pass those skills on. Their lives, and they just want to sit there and watch their TV. and watch Yeah, they the think being wimpy, it, it protects them. 
when it's the opposite. It's right. it's just it's it's totally backwards. And pass those skills on. And like I said before, the founders used both. They used very public organization, and they also had the Sons of Liberty. It's a yin and yang thing. Use them both, but don't fool yourself into thinking, you guys out there, that by being silent and waiting for the day that you're getting things done. Organize right now. Get your That's right. If you won't get involved in the info war, you'll never physically fight. I know some guys who are off the radar because they're combat vets, and that's a that's a different ball game, you know. But if you're not, unless you're one of them, then you better be doing something very publicly. We need everybody to be public. I, we need people to get aggressive right now. Right. But that's the only thing that's going to save us is backing these crooks off because they're watching, they're testing, and, and and if we fail the test, they're going to blow stuff up and blame it on us. They're going to come after us, and all hell's going to break loose. And by the way, the police out there. I'm not spoiling for some fight. Me and my kids aren't going to one of your dungeons. And let me explain something. You don't want to be in this civil war. The globalists plan to wipe you out in the first year of this war. That, that is the plan, is to have us kill each other. So we need to get that message out to police. Do not go out and round up people for their political views. All right, your, your children are going to be either free or slaves also. They're not going to be exempt. So the police out there definitely need to choose sides. You need to choose, you know, who, who do you serve? Do you serve the Constitution, the American people, or do you serve the destroyers? Make Let's talk to it. Pete in New York. Let's uh, Go ahead, Pete. Got about a minute and a half. Hey, Alex. Hey, Stuart. How are you guys doing today? Good, sir. Go ahead. Hey, Stuart. I had the pleasure of meeting you this past April. I drove up from Long Island All right. to renew my oath. Um, I met you. I had the pleasure of meeting Franklin Shook. I sat down at a picnic table, and um, I guess it was Springfield because we drove from Lexington to Springfield yep. to renew the oath. And I had the pleasure of shaking your hand and, and talking with you for a little while. Let me tell you, I'm such a such a proud member of Oath Keepers. Well, and thanks, man. I'm God bless you, brother. About this. Yeah, I'm very excited about this special civilization preservation team program that's going to be uh, going forward real soon. And I'm going to a New York meeting in another week or two. Good. And I just wanted to say that the spirit of 1776 is rising. We are not going to take it anymore, and we are going to go into action. You got it. Good. Good. We better warn everybody. Get the word out. Stuart, stay there. We got Tosh Plum.